Hi, I'm Paul Bertarelli, editor of Aviation Consumer, and welcome to our continuing audio and video series on the world of aviation products and services. If you're an airplane owner, you'll probably recognize these things here on the bench. They're ordinary aircraft vacuum pumps. For the past few weeks, we've been investigating both wet and dry pumps to see if we can make some kind of recommendations on which ones are the best buys. As part of that project, we surveyed about 140 aircraft owners and we discovered something interesting. Owners who fly with wet pumps, and that seems to be mostly owners of older Beechcraft and Cessna airplanes, absolutely swear by these things. By a margin of something like 10 to 1, they prefer wet pumps over dry pumps. So we decided to look into this with some bench testing of the pumps, and with a little dissection of these pumps, I think you'll see why wet pump pumps are considered to be more durable. If you'll permit me an Andy Rooney moment here, we can zoom in on these pumps on the bench. I'll show you what's inside them. This is a pretty much an ordinary dry vacuum pump. This one happens to be a Sigma Tech, which is considered to be a pretty good pump. As you can see, it consists of an aluminum body. This is the dry side that hooks into the aircraft accessory section. The pump itself is made of a heavy aluminum rotor, and into that rotor are milled a series of slots. And these graphite veins fit into these slots like so. And the pump works essentially just like a little paddle wheel. As it turns, it picks up bits of air, the, the veins seal against the bore, and it blows air out one side and sucks it in the other. The veins themselves are made of graphite. They're fairly small and they're fairly brittle, and that's part of the problem with dry vacuum pumps. These things eventually wear out, they shatter, and it tanks the whole pump. Uh, just to show that uh, dry pump technology hasn't completely stood still, this is a dual vacuum pump uh, made by a company called Aero Advantage a few years ago, and it was their bright idea to combine two vacuum pumps, dual, one ahead of the other in a tandem fashion, the idea being that if one failed, the other one could pick up the slack and you were covered. Unfortunately, what they didn't plan on was when an engine turns and applies power here to the, from the accessory case into the pump, it transmits a, fair, a fairly high uh, uh, torsional back towards the back of the pump, and that was causing this long shaft to whip and it was causing the rear pump to fail at an abnormally high rate. The company decided they couldn't fix that, so they withdrew it. And the company's now out of business. We had one of these in our airplane, so it was for us it was about a thousand dollar mistake. By contrast, this is a wet pump. Uh, as you can see, the construction is similar, but it's quite a bit more robust. This is a pump made by a company called Airwolf, and as far as we know, it's the only company making new wet vacuum pumps. As you can see, the basic operating principle is somewhat similar. These are the graphite veins. They're much larger, much more robust. They're made of a slightly softer graphite. These run in a fairly heavy steel rotor that has a steel centering pin in the center of it. And each end of the rotor has a fairly robust bearing, which of course the dry pump doesn't have. And blades or veins fit into the slots in the rotor like this. These veins bear on a cast iron insert that's inserted into the aluminum body of the pump. They form a very good seal and of course because this pump is lubricated with oil, uh, the veins tend to wear less and they also form a much better seal so the pump is more efficient. If you look at the other side of the pump, and uh, let's look at the assembled one here, this is what the accessory drive side looks like. Now I mentioned in the previous pump that the, the vacuum pumps do have problems with torsionals from the engine. In the wet design, at least the Airwolf design, they handle that with a separate coupler that has a couple little springs in here uh, that isolate the torsionals. Uh, from the pump itself and they also serve, if the pump malfunctions, they also serve to help shear off this drive so that you don't damage your accessory case. The oil in a wet pump goes in through these small little metering holes and then it flows back through the top of the pump and then comes in through the back. So we're not talking about a lot of oil here. The company says that uh, it uses about uh, three, cc's of, uh, three cc's of oil every 10 minutes and we calculated that that works out to about 0.02 quart per hour so it's not much oil. 
uh, but it does seal the pump and it serves to lubricate it, which is one of the reasons why they last longer. Of course, if you're going to install a pump, as you'll see when we run these on the test stand, you're going to need to have an air oil separator so all that pump that's exhausted out, uh, the exhaust of the pump doesn't end up on the bell of the airplane. So now that you've seen how these pumps are built, let's go ahead and hook one up on the test stand and see how it works. To test pumps, we simply connected them to a variable speed DC motor powered by a lab power supply. For this test, I'm using a simple volumetric flow meter and a vacuum pressure gauge similar to what you might have in the airplane. What we really wanted to see in these tests is how well the wet vacuum pump compares to dry pumps and the SigmaTech piston pump at low idle speeds. It turns out it compared quite favorably, easily delivering three to four cubic feet of air at low idle. We placed a sheet of paper in front of the exhaust and noticed only the slightest bit of oil mist. Of course, the pump isn't being oiled by the engine, but still, the oil exhaust was minimal. Okay, so you've seen these pumps run and now you know how they're made. What's the bottom line here? It's really no different than any other aircraft part or accessory. It's all about how much money you're willing to spend. This new Airwolf pump, for example, costs $1,600 and you can plan on another $400 for an air oil separator. So with labor, call it about $2,400 to convert from a dry pump. That's a lot of money, but you do get a 10-year, 2,000-hour warranty, which is pretty much unheard of in anything to do with aviation. As I mentioned earlier, owners who have wet pumps seem to love them, so if you're a serious IFR pilot, a wet pump is probably worth the investment. If you'd like more detail on our vacuum pump testing project, check out the Aviation Consumer website at www.aviationconsumer.com. Thanks for watching and thanks for using AvWeb.